last few lectures we have looked at how to get the static and kinematic indeterminacy of a structure. Then we have reviewed the basic concepts uh, of the principle of virtual work and after that we have actually looked at applying the virtual force method in getting the response of statically indeterminate structures using the force method. Anyway, the whole point is you should have already been exposed to the force method. I just spent some time looking, reviewing and especially using the principle of virtual work to set up the equations. Today, we are going to be taking up a truss example and going through the entire procedure for a particular, as I promised last time, that I shall be looking at realistic example problems and today that is what I am going to be doing. I am going to take a realistic problem, a truss problem and then go through with the entire analysis procedure and get the answers so that you would be able to understand all the steps that go through in using the force method for a truss example. Next lecture, I am going to be taking up a beam and a frame example so that we can walk through not only the procedure itself but the steps in the procedure so that you can get whatever it is that you are asked, be asked to find out. Okay? So, let us now look at the truss example. This is a typical truss bridge that you are likely to see if you have ever travelled by train on a railway bridge. Of course, what I have done is typically you have many panels in a railway bridge and I have just taken four panels, one, two, three, four. Each panel is five meters length and therefore, the total span of the bridge is 20 meters. And if you look at the height of the bridge, this is 5 meters. This is typical, the 5 meter length is a typical length that you would see in most uh, bridges in India. Okay. And uh, the only thing that I have done is I have taken uh, the panel, the BCFG panel and I have put two diagonals in it and I have taken the CDGH panel and I have put two uh, diagonals in it. Okay. So, these are the end portal, these are the verticals, these are the diagonals and this is the bottom chord and the top chord. So, B C D is the top chord, A F G H E is the bottom chord and B F C G D H are the verticals, A B is the end raker, A, A B and D E and the diagonals are B G, F C, C H and G D. Okay. So, uh, you are given that there is a loading 150 kilonewtons at F, 200 kilonewtons at G, 150 kilonewtons at H. So, this is the loading and uh, you are also given that all the members have an area of 2000 meters millimeter squared and the E value this is steel. So, it is 200 GPA okay. and the, the question is find the forces in members due to the loading alone and the second part is find the forces in the members due to a temperature effect only. Okay. The temperature effect the top members A, B, B, C, C, D and D, E these are subjected to plus 25 degree Celsius uh, increase in temperature and alpha is given as 1.2 into 10 to the power of 5, which is the coefficient of thermal expansion for a steel member. Okay. So, this is the entire problem and these, this is what you have to find out. Okay. So, now if you look at this again, let us first find out what the static indeterminacy of the structure is. For that, let me draw the structure again. The 
this is the structure ok. So, we have to find out to find out the static intermediacy of a truss first and foremost find out the number of members. Members is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, number of members is 12 ok. Number of support reactions 1, 2 at the hinge and 3 at the 1 at the roller. So, total 3 and now we have to find out how many joints there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So if you look at it, how many members do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we have fifteen members. I missed the three verticals when I was doing the computation. So there are fifteen members. Okay. So let us look at it. So how many unknowns do we have? For each member, one force, the actual force in the member is an unknown and the number of reactions are unknown. So, total number of unknowns are m plus r which is 15 plus 3 which is equal to 18 and number of equations are 2 for each joint. So, it is 2 into 8, 16. So, static indeterminacy So, the static indeterminacy of this problem is 2 and therefore, we, we are required. So, you see we are going through all the steps that we have. We are going through all the steps in that we have first the computation of the static indeterminacy of the structure. Once we have the static indeterminacy, then we find out the number of redundants. Redundants are those which if we put equal to 0, then we have a stable statically determinate structure. So, let us look at that. In this particular case, this is my x 1 and this is my x 2. Okay. So, these are my members. So, if I look at it, therefore, then my base structure, if I look at my base structure, my base structure is Please note that my drawing is not very good. So, actually this member and this member are the same size because the panels this and this panel size is the same. Okay. So, this is my base uh, structure okay. and now uh, I am solving the first part of the problem which is forces in the members due to loading. So, let us look at that. Let us put the loading. hundred and fifty, two hundred, hundred and fifty. Okay. So, this is the loading. Now, I need to, since this is a statically determinate structure, I need to find out all the forces in all the members due to the loading alone. Okay. So, if we look at it, if we see sigma f x equal to 0 gives me this and sigma f y equal to 0 and taking moments about any point, you will see this is symmetric loading. So, therefore, without much ado, I am going to write down the reactions. So, if you look at the reactions, then this is 250, 250 here and 0 is the horizontal thrust here. And so, once we have done that, we can actually start solving uh, for uh, the this thing uh, for the uh, structural loading and therefore, if you look at it, I can start at this point. Let me just put down this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. 
Okay. So, taking uh, the method of joints at this point, we will see that this is equal to because the vertical component of it has to be equal to this and therefore the horizontal component of this is equal to this. So, this is 250. Now, if we go over here uh, and take moment, uh, I mean more method of joints here, this turns out to be 250 and this turns out to be Uh, 150. Okay. So, once we have that, then again uh, I can actually go everywhere, but I am just saying I am, uh, you know, if I do this here, this will also turn out to be 250 over root 2. This is going to be equal to 250. Similarly, this will be 250 and this will be 150. Okay. And uh, once we do that, we can find out the forces uh, in these members also. Without much uh, ado, I can, I'm, not, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this. And uh, if you look at this, this will turn out to be, you see the vertical component of this has to be of this member has to be equal to this minus this. So, if you really look at it, this will become 100 root 2 and if we do that, then this becomes 350. If you take moments at this particular point, this one, this member turns out to be a zero force member. This one is 350 and similarly because of this is 100 root 2. So, I have got all the uh, all the forces and all the members. So, now, <clears throat> now the thing is that what we need to do is what is the, what is the next step? The next step is see remember that these members are cut but they still exist. Remember that always, that we know that the forces in these members are 0 because we have cut them. However, they still, the members still exist. So, I should actually put it down as 0 and 0. However, one other point that again I am going back, how do we get the additional equation? See, we have 16 equations and 18 unknowns. So, we actually need two more equations so that we can solve for uh, x 1 and x 2. How do we do that? That is by actually finding out the displacement rel of these two points relative to each other given the loading and also given x 1 and x 2. Once we find those out, then we can solve for uh, find out the compatibility condition over here will be that this displacement has to be equal to 0 and the compatibility condition here is the displacement has to be equal to 0. So, that gives us two additional equations and once we have those two additional equations, we can solve for them, get x 1 and x 2 and once we get x 1 and x 2, we can, uh, the structure can be, all the mem member forces can be found out. Okay? So, uh, now I, what I want to do is, so that is all the forces in the members. Okay? Now, how do we find out uh, the, the uh, displacement at that point? Now, I want to introduce one concept and that is that if you note that all I need to do, just look through this, I need to actually solve two other problems. Let me go through it and then I will explain to you what I am doing.
what I have done here is that I need to look at two additional analyses. Okay, if you look at this, what does this represent, this analysis? Here what I have done is, corresponding to the redundant force, I have put a unit force here and corresponding to the second redundant force, this is 0. The second uh, structure has the uh, force corresponding to the first redundant as 0 and the force corresponding to the second redundant as 1. Okay? And I claim that if I solve these two additional equilibrium problems, I should be able to analyze this structure. Now, let me explain how that is. Let us look at this. One of the first things is to the compatibility. For the compatibility, I have to find out the displacement at this point due to the loading plus due to x1 plus due to x2. You see? So, actually the displacement at this point, I need to find out under this loading, under this loading, of course not equal to 1, equal to x1 and under this loading where x2. You see? If you, if you add this and this and this with this not 1, but x1 and x2, then you see that is the structure, actual structure that you have. And this point is therefore, what you are trying to do is again use superposition, find out the displacement at both the cuts due to all the loads and then sum them all up and that will give you the actual uh, displacement. Okay? Now, the loading uh, we have done. Now, in the loading, if I need to find out the, this displacement and I am using the principle of virtual displacement, what would I do? I would use a virtual force system where this was equal to some arbitrary value. I, I might as well take it equal to 1. Okay? Now, if I wanted to find out the displacement here, what would I have to do? I would have to find out, take a unit force corresponding to this and then find out the work done. So, this would be the virtual force system to find this displacement. This would be the virtual force system to find this displacement under this loading. Now, furthermore, under this loading, I need to find out the displacement here. So, under this loading, you see this problem, okay, again is the same loading, excepting that it is not equal to 1, it will be multiplied by x1. That will give me the displacement at this point. So, the real force system is this and for finding out this displacement here, this is the virtual force system. For finding out the displacement here, this is the virtual force system. Then to find out the, the uh, displacement here, okay, due to this loading, this is the virtual force system. Okay. Now, let us look at this particular case. In this particular case, under this loading, if I have to find out the displacement here, then this is the virtual force system. Okay? And if I have to find out the displacement here, then this itself is a virtual force system. You see, so therefore, the point that I am trying to make is that as long as I have these three, this one and this one and this one equilibrium, I can actually get all the variety of things. Okay? So, therefore, uh, I am going to solve for this and I am going to put equal to 1 here because if it is the actual load, then all I have to do is find out the forces here and multiply it by x1. That is not just the forces, even the displacements I get here, I multiply by x1 and I get the uh, the actual displacements due to x1. Okay? Now, here is where I am going to introduce, first let me solve these structures and then we will go on to seeing what is there, uh, what additional points that we have to note. I am going to make a general kind of development on the theory that we have already done, where is the displacement plus displacement plus displacement equal to 0. So, I am just going to put that down in proper format, so that you get the complete uh, way of solving all problems. So, first let me solve, uh, analyze this problem. So, under this loading, it is obvious since there is no external loading, sigma f x and sigma f y and sigma m equal to 0 at around any point shows that these uh, reactions are 0. If these reactions are 0, then these member forces automatically are equal to 0. 
Okay. So, if you look at this here also this is the force right. So, this is force equal to 1. So, if I take the, vertic the vertical component of this at this point will be taken by this. Uh, so, therefore, this is going to be equal to 1 over root 2 okay. and then the horizontal component of this will be taken by this. So, this is 1 over root 2 okay. and then uh, again if I look at this point this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0 and then since this is equal to 0, this will be equal to 0 and so is this equal to 0. Okay, because if you look at this, so since this is equal to 0, uh, now at this particular point, we have to be careful to see what are the other forces that we get. Okay. So, now let us look at something where we know. Okay. So, here uh, what we have is uh, w w which is the point? Do I know all the forces? I do not know all the forces. There are three unknowns here. So, which place should I go to? I will go to this point where I have two unknowns. So, if I look at this particular one, the vertical component of this is going to be equal to this. Okay. So, therefore, if I put that you will see that this will be equal to 1. Okay. Uh, then, if you look at uh, this particular one, the vertical component of this is equal to uh, horizontal component of this. So, this is going to be equal to 1 root 2. Now, let us look at where, where do we go here. Now, here do we know 3? Yeah, we know 3 of them. Okay. So, if you look at this particular one, okay, I know 1, 2, 3. So, I have only 2 unknowns. So, I can solve for them. Now, if I look at the vertical component, does it give me anything? No. Okay. Can I look at the horizontal component? You know, uh, horizontal component, this one does not contribute, only this contributes. So, if you look at this, the horizontal component of this is 1 over root 2 and this is opposite. So, summation equal to 0. So, therefore, this force has to be equal to 0. Now, if this force is equal to 0, then only the vertical component of this comes in here and if we look at this, this becomes 1 over root 2. Okay? So, therefore, and now let us come to here, this point. Okay? If we come to this point, I know this force, I know this force, I know this force, I know this force, so I just need to check whether this will come out. So, what will this be? The horizontal component. If I take the horizontal component of this, I get minus 1 up upon root 2 uh, upon root 2. So, this becomes equal to 0. If you look at the vertical component, this is 1, 1 over root 2, check. Everything checks. And if I come over here, all forces in the members are 0. So, therefore, it checks. Okay. You will always get 3 checks. So, here I have got sigma f x and f y equal to 0 and here I have got sigma f y equal to 0. These are the 3 checks that I have in this entire uh, procedure. Okay? So, that means these forces, these are the forces due to this application of x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0. Similarly, if I apply x 2 equal to 0, I mean x 2 equal to 1 and x 1 equal to 0, then just we get exactly the same uh, kind of thing. Only thing is that on this side because of this x 1, these panels are non-zero and these panels are zero. Here you will just have the opposite. These panels are zero. I am not going to uh, go through these steps. I will uh, request you to uh, go through uh, these steps uh, yourself. Uh, as I said, analysis is not something that I am going to be doing. Okay? So, I am just writing down the values. statically determinate analysis, you should already be uh, totally uh, used to it. Okay? Um, and then this is 0, this is 0 and uh, this is 1 over root 2. Okay? So, uh, I think uh, that essentially anything, oh yeah, these, this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 1 over root 2. Okay? Uh, I think that takes care of it. Those are the two analyses. 
Now, having done these three analyses, let me write down all the values that I have in a particular uh, pattern. Okay, I'm going to write it down in a table. And so, this table, I'm going to make first the table will have member. Okay, so members here. Then I'm going to write down the load. This I'm writing down is the load, is the actual force in members due to the loading. Okay, then next I'm going to write down and I'll call this P1I. This is the force that I have got in the members due to x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 0. So, these are what I call as P1i. I will explain to you what I, why I call it P1i and then this I will call it as P2i. So, I am going to write it down as P2i and let me write them all down. Okay. So, I have member AB, then I have member B C, then I have member C D, then I have member D E, then I have member A F, B F, B G, F C, F G, I am not going to be able to write down all the uh, members here, okay, but you understand the point that I am trying to uh, do here. There are a total number of uh, 18 uh, member forces, so I have to uh, actually uh, put it down F G, then I have C G, then I have C H, then I have G D, then I have G H, D H and H E. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yes, correct. So, I have 15 members that I have here and I am going to write down the, the values of the loads that I get. In member A, B, I got a compressive force, so I am going to compressive force for me is going to be equal to negative, so this and then in um, this load, I am just, I am actually just, uh, just to, sh to explain to you what I am doing is, let's, let's just let us see, I will just show you one thing that what is A B, member A B, 250 compressive, okay, so that is all I have done, minus 250. Then if you look at this A B in this 0, in this 0, so 0. So, all I am doing here is actually just putting down all the values uh, for you. So, this is going to be compressive minus 350, here this is going to be minus 1 over root 2 and in this case 0 this is C D minus 350, then 0 minus 1 over root 2 and then D E, I have uh, uh, D E is minus 250 for the loading, uh, for this it is 0 and for this it is 0. A F, A F is plus 250 because it is tension and in this case A F is 0, in this case it is 0. B F, B F is plus 150 here, minus 1 over root 2 here and 0 here. B G, B G if you look at it, it is going to be plus 100 root 2, here B G is equal to 1, in here B G equal to 0. F C, 
F C is equal to 0 here because that is uh, F C is x 1. So, here it is going to be 1 and here it is going to be 0. This is F C is the, the force here is x 1. So, obviously it will be 0 here 1 corresponding to x 1 equal to 1 and 0 when x 1 equal to 0. F G is plus 250 here then it is minus 1 over root 2 here and 0 here. C G C G is going to be equal to 0 here okay. uh, minus 1 over root 2 here and minus 1 over root 2 here. C H C H is going to be uh, C H uh -huh. C H is equal to x 2. So, this is going to be 0 here, 0 here and 1 here. Okay. So, if you look at this for x 1 0 1 0 for x 2 0 0 1 obvious. G D G D is going to be equal to 100 plus 100 root 2 here. G D is going to be 0 here and is going to be equal to 1 here. G H G H is going to be plus 250 here. It is going to be 0 here and it is going to be minus 1 over root 2 here. And finally, I have uh, D H. D H is plus 150. Uh, here d h is 0, here it is minus 1 over root 2 and finally h e plus 250 0 0. So, these are all the members that I have. Now, <clears throat> you see uh, understand this that this is the real loading. Okay? This represents so, in the real loading case, if I want to find out the displacement corresponding to in F C, the separation, then what is my virtual displacement pattern? This one. Okay? And if I want to find out the displacement corresponding to x2 in C H, this is going to be the virtual force. Okay? So, therefore, if I look at it, therefore, uh, here I am going to now put it down on paper that virtual displacement gives me in the first case 1 into delta 1 0. What is this delta 1 0? This is the separation at the, this separation. Okay. So, for this, this is my virtual displacement pattern which where I put x 1 equal to 1, okay, x 1 equal to 1. So, therefore, for that one, the virtual work principle is going to be 1, that is the virtual force corresponding to delta L 1 into delta L 1, delta 1 0 is equal to summation over all the members i. Okay. And on each member, the deformation, what is the real deformation? Real deformation is the real load multiplied by L i upon E a. Note that E a here is the same for all the members. This is the real deformation multiplied by the virtual force, which is going to be equal to P 1 i. Is that clear? So, therefore, you understand that delta 1 0 is nothing but summation of now since E a goes outside because E a is the same for all the members. So, this is going to be equal to P 1 P 1 I L I that is all. So, that gives me delta 1 0. How do I get delta 1 x? Delta 1 due to 
x 1 delta x 1 is going to be equal to let us look at it this is again here the real load is going to be p 1 x 1 because note that p 1 x 1 gives me the forces in all the members due to the load x 1 the real load x 1. So, this is going to be this load into L i upon E a multiplied by now this is the 1. So, therefore, this one the virtual force pattern is going to be P 1 i. Okay? So, therefore, if you really look at this, this turns out to be equal to now the x 1 and E a are independent of each other. So, I can take it outside. So, I get x 1 upon E a inside P 1 i squared L i. Okay? Now, what do I want to find out? I want to find out delta 2 1 that is the load corresponding uh, the real load is x 1 and I want to find out the displacement corresponding to x 2. So, if I look at this now I am just going to write these down. I do not need to uh, talk about them anymore. The real load is 1. So, the real is P 1 i into x 1 into L i upon E a and the virtual load is P 2 i because that is the displacement that you are finding out. If I put this in I get x 1 upon E a summation P 1 i P 2 i L i. Okay? And in this fashion re putting down all of these I can put them down in this fashion. Using the virtual work I have got delta 1 is equal to 1 upon E a P i P 1 i L i delta 2 0 is equal to 1 upon E a summation P i P 2 i L i delta 1 1 this is due to x 1 is going to be equal to x 1 into 1 upon E a P 1 squared L i sorry the E a is already outside so the E a is not required. Okay? Of course, if E a is not the same you can put E a i inside also then delta 2 1 is equal to x 1 into 1 upon E a P 1 i P 2 i L i delta 2 2 is equal to x 2 1 upon E a P 2 i squared L i and delta 1 2 there is a displacement at 1 due to x 2 is going to be equal to x 2 1 upon E a summation P 1 i P 2 i now, if we do this, let us look at what this represents. What does this term represent? This term represents the displacement at 1 due to a unit x 1. Okay? Displacement at 1 due to a unit load x 1. Okay? That can be defined as a flexibility coefficient 1 1. What is flexibility coefficient? Understand displacement due to unit load is what? Flexibility and I am putting down F 1 1 because that corresponds to delta 1 1. This is the displacement at 1 due to a unit load at 1. What is this? This part if you look at it is displacement at 2 due to a unit load x 1. So, F 2 1. What is this? Displacement at 2 
due to a unit load at 1. What is this? Delta 2, 2. Load displacement at 2 due to load at 2. So, this part is equal to F 2, 2. Displacement at 2 due to a unit load at 2. And this part is equal to F 1, 2. Displacement at 1 due to load at 2. So, this will be displacement at 1 due to a unit load at 2. All these are nothing but the flexibility coefficients for this structure. So, if I put them together, you will see I can rewrite this equation in this manner. Delta 1 0, this is the displacement at 1 due to the loading plus F 1 1 X 1, displacement at 1 due to unit load multiplied by the load itself plus F 1 2 x 2, displacement at 1 due to the load at 2, multiply unit load at 2 multiplied by x 2 and this if you look at this, what is this? Displacement 1 due to loading, displacement at 1 due to x 1, displacement at 1 due to x 2 and if you add all of the 3 up, that, that is the original structure, right? This is the displacement in the original structure. What is the displacement in the original structure? Those 2 points cannot move, okay? So, therefore, the displacement in the original structure is this. Now, let us look at the second compatibility condition. This, this is the compatibility condition corresponding to the first load. So, that was that here what I am saying is that at this point due to summation of all the effects, the, these two points cannot go apart because F c is actually a member. Okay. So, then next similarly for the other one F 2 1 x 1 plus F 2 2 x 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Here if you look at this, this is displacement at 2 due to the x 1 because due to unit multiplied by x 1, this gives me the displacement at 2 due to x 1, displacement at 2 due to x 2, displacement due to the loading, all of them together add up to 0. These are my compatibility conditions. And I can solve for these to get x1 and x2. So, if I look at this, this one I can rewrite in this fashion f11, f12, f21, f22, x1, x2 equal to 0, 0. Okay. Now, for this particular structure, I have, I shall write down the L i. Uh, the only thing that I need to do over here is write down what the L i are for each and then all I need to do is just multiply all those values. Okay. I have got note that I can, once I find out P 1 i, P 1, P 1, P 2, L i, I can find out all these coefficients and I am going to do those, but first I will write down the L i and if you look at the L i, okay, this is going to be equal to A b, A b is going to be equal to 5 root 2, B c, B c is going to be 5, C d, C d is going to be 5, uh, D e, D e is going to be 5 root 2, A f, a f is going to be equal to 5, B f, B f is going to be equal to 5 okay. and uh, then uh, if you really look at it, uh, next we have B g, uh, B g is equal to 5 root 2, uh, F c, F c is equal to 5 root 2, F g, F g is equal to 5, C g, C g is equal to 5, C h, C h is equal to 5 root 2, G d, G d is equal to 5 root 2, G h, G h is equal to 5, D h, D h is going to be equal to 5, 
H E, H E is going to be equal to 5. So I have got all my displacement lengths etc. and I can now do all of uh, these computations. I will write down the values uh, for you uh, right now uh, and then uh, so therefore in this particular case delta 1 0 is equal to 823.22 upon E A delta 2 0 identical because it is a symmetrical structure 823 22 upon E A and F11 F11 is equal to 24.19 E A F22 is also the same 24.19 upon E A and F12 is equal to F21, it is equal to 2.5 upon Ea. Uh, this is not equal to 0, this is equal to minus delta 1 0 and minus delta 2 0. These, these terms come in here. Uh, so, this is the equation. Here I know F1, F12, F21, F22. I know delta 1 0 and delta 2 2 and I can solve these equations for x 1 and x 2. I will actually write down the values of x 1 and x 2 for you and they turn out to be equal to x 1 is equal to x 2 is equal to 30.9 kilo newtons. Okay? So now uh, how do I find out the force in all the members? The force in all the members are going to be equal to P i plus P 1 i plus P 2 i x 2. I can find out the force, actual force in all the members in this fashion. Okay? This is in the actual structure. Okay? So, so much uh, for all of this. Now, I want to end it by talking about one very fundamental point over here and that is that you see that F12 is equal to F21 in this particular case. Is that true always? Is that always true? Now you will see that what does F12 represent? F12 represents the displacement at 1 due to unit load at 2. And what does F21 represent? Displacement at 2 due to unit load at 1. Now let us look at this. What is this? If you really look at this, that displacement at 1 due to unit load at 2. So that means the loads in both the cases, in one case it is applied at 2, in one case it is applied at 1, the loads are the same. So, what can we say about the displacements? Let us go back to the Maxwell's Betty reciprocal theorem. If you really look at that, what does that say? It says due to a load at 1, the displacement at 2 is equal to the displacement at 1 if we apply the same load at 2. That is what reciprocal theorem. So, therefore, if you really look at this, the same load is being applied, 1, unit load. Once it is being applied at 1 and we are finding out the displacement at 2 and in one case we are applying the load at 2 and we are finding out the displacement at 1. Obviously, they are going to be the same. Okay? So, therefore, this is a fundamental fact that the coefficients F12 and F21 are always equal to each other, always. And in fact, we can make this general. We can say that this is always the case. If that is the case and these two are equal to each other, what can we say about this matrix? This is a symmetric matrix and this is always true. The flexibility matrix is always symmetric. Okay? Now, this is due to the load alone. Now, we also looked at how to get the uh, for the temperature. I am going to leave this for the next lecture as to how to compute 
x1 and x2 and then of course all the member forces due to the temperature in the members a b b c c d and d e thank you